Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall for the second episode in the Scratch Build series. Tonight we are going to look at adding the little extension to the side of the house. We're going to sort out the chimneys and we're going to add some supports for the roof. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the easy ones first. The easy things are the chimneys and the supports and I'm just going to rattle through them fairly quickly because they are so straightforward. As you can see, I've already done one here and what I've done is taking a bit of card from your scraps box, probably one of your window apertures or something like that will work perfectly. You want to double up the layer of card like so and simply glue it into place okay onto your chimney now obviously you need to measure the width of your chimney in my case it's 11.5 millimeters so these cards are cut to the same um, width and all we're do, going to do is glue them up into place <coughs> excuse me now the only thing that you need to be careful of is to try and make sure that you get a nice a, a nice smooth line on both the edges and the top section. Now as you can see there, I have gone down in below the building. Um, really it's just, I mean, it's going to be hidden anyway. But also, whenever we add the brick cladding to the edges here, it means we can drop the cladding down just a little bit in behind. And should there be any sort of misalignment with regards to the uh, the roof going on on top, well, we've got a little bit of sort of um, saving grace in behind there with the brickwork. But it shouldn't be an issue. But I thought we would just put it in there just in case. And that's your chimneys. So the chimneys will already look much better and you're looking for the, the depth of that chimney to be approximately five millimeters so depending on the thickness of the card that you're using will determine how many layers um, you need to add together of those little bits of scrap okay so moving on the supports what i want to do is add a length of a support along each side of the slope on this center section and then also one on here on the slopes on either end too now it might well be overkill but i would rather err on the side of caution so what i've done is taken um a three or taken uh, some of your mount board card and i've cut a three mil strip nice long strip so we can work with and all I'm going to do is roughly measure out, now it doesn't have to be accurate, all we're wanting to do is get enough of a ridge on either side of this so whenever the roof goes on to it, it's just giving a little bit more support either side rather than just relying on this one little sheet of card and equally on this side here that it's not just relying on that one little sheet um, and it's really just, it's a precaution it's, it's probably not necessary but I would rather err on the side of caution than not do it at all so I am just going to roughly measure that like I say I'm not looking for absolute perfection in this it's just enough it's just enough to place on each side Let's see like this here And we're going to add it in on each side of it. Now, while I do this, going back to the first episode, I did ask for people to share your um, bills with me on my Facebook page. And certainly I've had some great comments coming from you on on that first episode and how it's um, inspiring some people who maybe haven't done any scratch building before to give it a go um, but equally I've had I've had one person show me um, their build process to so far and that's uh, Steve Skelton 
And in actual fact, he showed me that on the evening after the video first went up. So he didn't hang around. So I'm really quite impressed, Steve. Um, it's a cracking looking job that you've done of it so far. So I'll be looking forward to seeing how you get on with this next stage. But if anybody else would like to post a picture on my Facebook page, just go to the description below and click on the link and you'll be able to do the same. Uh, like I say, I would love to see all your work, how you are getting on with the build yourself. Okay, so by adding those two little strips in, we now have a much stronger base for the, the roof to go on to. Actually, just while I'm sitting here thinking or doing this as well, I'm just seeing the line on the uh, um, the side of the walls. It would probably be a good idea at this stage to also add a strip of wood in along here. Now, again, I wouldn't necessarily do it the whole way, um, particularly over the, the, the doorway there. You may have to run a slightly thinner strip, but if we're going to be placing a floor into this building it would help to have some support running right the way along so that uh, the floor doesn't bend down and also gives it a nice level one so i'll go ahead and finish off this i'll come back to you um, whenever that's done and whenever we're going to start discussing this um this end gable side here okay okay so we've added in all those supports as you can see here now this section in particular is quite thick but as to are the edges you'll also notice that I've added in a couple of supports in the uh, um, flooring uh, and I've done that on both sides and on the ends and that means whenever we come to fit the flooring in on the first floors they will have something to sit down and rest on so these here ones were done with uh, two mil strips of card rather than the three mil that we did on the upper supports but really to be honest you would get away with the three uh, two mil up here too it's really just to give a, a wider section for the roof to sit on and will prevent it from bowing a little bit more so anyway let's move on to this section here so this section has caused me no end of problems trying to come up with the solution card isn't going to work on this I've tried it and I've tried it a number of times and every time it's failed and the reason it's failing is is because as you'll see in the picture that comes up now the end gable has that curve to it so we need to curve the, um, the wall round to meet with this one here and in curving the card which we're using for the rest of the build it starts to come apart because it's layered up as all card is and it splits and then this becomes too weak so you also have creases that sort of appear in the front of it now that might not be too bad because we'll be covering all this card anyway but it's just not the solution for the um, the end wall so what we're going to have to do then instead is to use plastic card so I have cut out a strip of plastic card I've actually this is 0.75 mil plastic card and what I've done is I've sandwiched two together I'm hoping the 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 gluing of the two sections together the bond is strong enough that it won't go the same way as the card and I have done a test on it there's a slight bit of move in it but there's nothing that can't be altered just with trimming out the one edge but it certainly doesn't split in the way the um the card does now, as you can see, I have a line drawn in the centre plus the window has been put in place. That line denotes the height at the bottom of the um, the bottom of the, the roof. So if you can imagine, that's going to sit there. So we need to get rid of this whole upper section. But we still need some of it at this side because the wall climbs up on this side to this point here. So with that in mind, we need to draw a line on it. And we're just going to do a soft curved line coming down from that corner to meet the wall or to meet the lower section of it. Okay. And we need to trim all this here away. 
So I'm going to go and use the craft knife and give this a cut. Now I'm sort of avoiding doing some of this stuff on screen this week because that was one of the reasons the last video ran on so long. So I'm trying to sort of keep the time frame down in this. So I'll do this wee bit off screen and I'll come back to you. Okay, so we're back and I have that trimmed. You'll note that I haven't cut the window out yet and there's a very good reason for that. We're now going to try and force a corner out of this plastic and basically it's going to require a lot of manipulation with the fingers to bend it round. And we'll just keep working at that until we get a curve that we're happy with. Also, what I haven't done at the minute is trimmed this section of wall to its correct length because measuring in a curve isn't the most easy of exercises. So by doing it this way, we can put it in, test fit it, and then we can mark a cutting point at, you know, at the end to trim off the excess to meet with the other end of the wall. But as you can see already, it's beginning to get manipulated and it's working its way around. And once it gets all the way around, we'll be able to, you know, and it stays in place. All we'll have to do is glue this end and this end to the two main sections of the wall. And that'll be this done. <coughs> Excuse me. And this may take a little bit of time, but it's worth just sort of having the patience and doing it right. You can see, hopefully here, there's just a little edge appearing on this end of the plastic card. But again, we can trim that away with a craft knife at a later date. And plastic card is something that we are going to be using later on in the build process. So if you don't have it in your supplies box at the minute, it'll be well worth buying a sheet or two. And I will add it to the description of, uh, in the shopping list description below. I will also add at this stage um, the uh, plastic card that we're going to use for the uh, the roof for the roof tiles, um, because if you're ordering a sheet of this, you might as well be ordering the other one to save a little bit in postage and um, in the long term. So I'll add that to the shopping list at this point too. Right, I'm going to finish manipulating this off screen again and we'll come back to you whenever it's done but this is basically the process that we're doing and I'm just trying to reach a point where well, it's almost getting to that now so I'll be back in a minute okay so I think that's probably as much as I can get out of that but as you can see I think it's well worth the effort just to get that decorative look at the back now what I do need to do is trim off if I set that into place I need to trim off about two millimeters of this end just to make it work. Now in terms of the split, do you see the little line here? If we just run the craft blade down that, that will give it a nice um, smooth finish again. And the other thing that we'll need to do at this stage is cut the window out. But what you can do is rather than trying to cut it on this because obviously that's going to be at an angle is just turn it over draw out your window aperture on this side and then cut it out as you normally would now you can see that the um the plastic does want to sort of revert a little bit back to its original state but i think once in place with some good glue and left to set it's going to do the job just bang on and it'll just be enough to give a little bit of a, a detail on this side. So I'm going to go and draw out my windows, cut it out and get ready for the gluing process. And I'll come back to you once I'm at that stage. All right. Right, we're pretty much ready to go. So the window's been cut out and I've actually put out probably pretty much got it bang on the center as per the picture but that is more by luck than by design and it pretty much fits 
into this section quite well and that little curve is just beginning to hold now for this here we are going to have to use uh, rather than PVA we're going to use PV uh, sorry rather than PVA we're going to use Yuhu to bond these two surfaces together the PVA will probably work but it's not as good as strong a bond as what the um, the Yuhu will give and I hate this stuff I hate the stringiness of it but whenever it comes to fixing plastics to um, uh, to, uh, to card it really is the best approach I think we'll get the lid on that and we'll get that put into place now it may well require a little bit of holding to keep it in place for a time particularly on that curve oh it's awful stuff but fortunately this is all going to be covered so in terms of any marks and stickiness that comes on the outer sides it's not an issue in this case if we were doing this with brickwork we'd need to be an awful lot more careful right that's okay I think let's turn it around the side just so we can see maybe see it from this side too I think we've pretty much nailed that. Now you'll notice there I have slightly under measured by a small margin but I would rather have it correct at the top height than the bottom because the bottom's going to be um, uh, covered in you know weeds or whatever so it's not just so serious to have lost that. Right that pretty much does that. We'll let that set <clears throat> overnight and I'll check it again tomorrow. But as in terms of what we wanted to get done this week, I think we've pretty much nailed it. It's taking a little bit longer, particularly with this side here, but for the rest of you, well at least uh, whoever is um, doing this uh, video along with me, um, you, you don't have to work it out. but. It, T let me tell you it took me three nights to get to this point and even just doing this plastic here I sort of hit on it by accident rather than by design so I'm just glad now to have actually got it done just before we go I want to show you one other thing equally I'm going to add this into the uh, the shopping list um, because this is what we're going to be going on to next in the next video we are going to be looking at putting the, the render on the walls and we've also coins to add to each of the corners. The coins can be made from scratch yourself but rather than doing that they can be a little bit fiddly um, and they don't sort of necessarily give a, a sort of a nice even um, finish whenever you are doing them that way so we will be using uh, one of Scale Model Scenery's products and that's their large stone coins and the code is LX16800. Uh, these are laser cut and they literally require you to fold them over uh, to right angles and they get fixed to the sides so I think these will look really quite well with the the rest of the render so if you want to put an order in for some of those so that they're ready for you um, for the next stage of the build again it's not an, an absolute necessity you could build this without any coins in it at all and it'll work and it'll look absolutely fine but just sort of to to follow that sort of um, prototype aspect i'll be following the coin route so i'll add that into the shopping list as well in the meantime thanks very much for watching um, i hope that you enjoyed it i hope it was clear enough as well this time around it was a wee bit more sort of i wasn't 100 percent sure where i was going to with this here but um hopefully it's all sort of made plenty of sense to you and please sh if you are doing this build please share those pictures with me on my facebook page the details are below um equally go over to the model rail network facebook group 
post it up there uh, link it in alongside me as well and um, I'll, I'll, I'll see it there too uh, if you've come across this video for the first time and you haven't subscribed and you like what you're seeing please check out the first video and also click that subscribe button too uh, to follow more progress on this build and other things on the layout but in the meantime thanks very much for watching and chat soon